Hi, my name is um, IODG Thomas. How are you doing today? And um, welcome to Pharma Orb um, TV. Um, we're here to talk about um, the art um, and um, the art of farming, especially the crop farming, which is vegetable farming. And we have a special guest with me today that uh, is going to be putting us through that we're going to be talking about um, the aspect and everything to do about um, vegetable farming. Um, her name is um, Nishinka Adeshola. Um, she's been into farming for about seven years, and um, she's she's um, what we should call a professional in the art of farming vegetables. And um, we're going to be introducing her right now. Uh, let's see here. Hi, Nishola. How are you doing today? Hi. Good evening. I'm fine, and how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Um, is it okay to call you Yinka? Yes, very okay. Please okay. call me Yinka. So, um, like I said, um, the show is um, a show we're trying to we're we're trying not to make it um, we're trying to make it as comfortable as possible for you and I. Okay. And um, like I said, my name is Ayo DJ Thomas. You can call me Ayo for short. Um, uh, we're here to talk about um, vegetable farming, which we believe you know very much about. Um, I'm just going to let you introduce yourself to our viewers, and um, then we can go ahead and start the show proper. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. I'm Yinka Adeshola. You can have, I'm generally called Yinka. I'm a farmer. Um, other than that, well, that's what I do. I'm a farmer. I grow crops and vegetables. I grow crops, fruits and vegetables, and I'm also a trainer. I train out. Uh, I, we have a farm training center where we train people, and then for some successful candidates that pass through the training, we help them to search for farm manager job. And that we've been doing this now for quite some time. At least for the past five years, we've been doing that, and we've been getting people linked to farm owners and every other thing. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, that's a quite an introduction. Um, we actually have, have someone here online commenting already. Um, a comment from Flush Bini, and um, I don't know if it's she or he, um, says um, she's the <laughs> okay. best. We're gonna have that <laughs> online right now, yeah. So that just <laughs> tell you that you know, <laughs> we have the right person on the show with us right now, yeah. Um, so basically. <laughs> Um, how did you, you said you get, you got into, what we were talking previously, you said you've been into farming about seven years or crop farming yes. about five years. So in general, how did you get into farming? You know, I, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be, uh, gender, uh, anything that has to do with gender or whatever, but a woman into farming, I know, yes, olden days, the older people back home, when they were old, the, mm. the the men would stay at home, the women would go to the farm. But I know the new generation women are not like that. So for a new generation woman, how basically did you get into farming? Is it oh. um from yeah, yeah, just allow you talk. <laughs> okay, you see, my it's I my grandfather is a farmer. Though I didn't stay, though I didn't stay in the village much. I only go there on holiday, you know, when I stayed in the boarding school. So anytime we have holiday, just once in a while, not all the time, I go to the village and I followed him to farm, maybe once in a while. And on getting to the farm, I'm 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 surprised at the fact that okay, you put a seed of corn into the soil. And by the time you put the seed of corn into the soil, after some days you watch it grow. It's keep developing, and if you follow it up, you find out that maybe in the next some few months you are finding a big curb. You know what I mean by curb? Just yeah. that one seed that you drop, it has given you maybe 100, 200 uh, seeds that you can produce again. So it's kind of intrusion. So when I yeah. grow up to some extent, and I see there's poverty, there's, uh, there's poverty, people are poor and everything, and I keep wondering why they're not going to the farm. You know, you know that kind of idea that okay, yeah. people grow food, they will be okay, they will be no need for to look to lack again and every other thing. Because I believe for you to be able to put something to the soil and it's develop it's something really, really fanciful to me. But along the line, I got to some point. People will tell you say, ah, 
uh, people will tell you, say, look, hmm, you make more. If you, if you farm, you know, there's a hype about farming in Nigeria generally. I think yeah. people believe if every other alternative, the lowest alternative or the external extra alternative for everything is go to farm. You know what I mean? If anybody yeah. sees you don't have a job, they say go to farm. If anybody do this, they don't need, uh, you are not doing anything tangible, ah, why don't you go to farm? You know that attitude. So it's like farm is very simple. So when you get to farm, you start making quite a lot of money. So most of us, including me, I ran to farm on that basis again. Apart from what I learned, I, I discovered, I was like, okay, if I go to farm, maybe all those people on the farm, they're not doing it right. So if I go there, if I do my own, to be different, I will make plentiful harvest, you know, that kind of mentality. So, boom, I just told some other people, okay, guys, let's go to the farm, you know. And it's not that I've farmed before, apart from those one, one day, two, two days that I visit my grandfather, which I don't even, it's not that I followed him up. Maybe I'll, I'll go to the village, spend a week, and then go to farm one day. That was just the intriguing thing about it. It's not that I know anything about it, even before I start. So basically, most of um, the stuff, you know, are self learned And you also did research and, you know, on your own and yeah. things like that, right? Yeah, you and know, that, that's... What, I, what I normally tell people is, look, I learn expensively. Do you know how mm -hmm. I learn expensively? I learn expensively in the sense that nobody is there to say, don't do this, do this, put one here, put three here. <laughs> in my own case, I will have done that thing. Maybe I want to plant tomatoes now. I will plant the tomatoes. I will do it the way I want. I will have finished everything before I discover I didn't get anything. Mm. You know, in that way, I've spent the money, I've done yep. the time, I've, and I didn't have anything to show for it. So I will now sit back again. Okay, what did I do wrong? How did this thing go wrong like this? Okay, it was doing fruiting. It was, you understand? So I'll note that again. But you know something? I'm still going back again. I'll still repeat the same. I will repeat the process of planting. But now I will now watch out for the same mistake I made the other time. I will, not, mm. I will, go, I will have gone to study. Okay, that one, it was a big mistake. I'm not doing that yeah. again. But something else will still come up. You know, mm. at some point, people keep wondering, why, why do you keep wasting your time, spending money on the farm and everything. I, and I thought, look, at least there must be a way around it. I need to find the answer. So to be candid, I will say, yes, eventually, you know, there's something about our coach, our system is when you've grown to the, some extent, then people start offering you free things, trainings. Uh, you understand what I mean? By the yeah, time you're coming up. Huh? I get what you're saying. By yeah? By the time you are coming up and you are still struggling, nobody will offer you anything. It's mm -hmm. when you are, you know, when you are already, okay, this person is already growing. This person has a possibility. He has a pros she has a prospect. Okay, let me offer this. I want to partner. I want to do this. But while you are struggling, no, nobody offer you anything. Until when you are really, maybe you are creating a path. You, you are not there, but you are creating some mm. path. You are making some ways. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, that's that's oh. very true. Um, so, um, like I said, I um, I don't want this to be like um, I ask you a question, you give me an answer, you know. Yeah, I'm going to okay. be asking some questions, right? So, I want okay. you to basically just start that. Okay, um, um, I'm new to farming. I don't know anything about farming, and I meet. I'm okay. like, okay, you can't. I want to get into crop farming. Okay. What's going to be your idea of? How do I start from someone that is a novice that doesn't really know much about farming? How do I go about it? How do I, you know, how would you advise me to start up? What are the steps, um, the first things to, to do? The, you know, what would you encourage a first timer like me? Not with so much money, but also want to get into it and, uh, and you know, just start up. How would you, you know, Tell me to start. Okay. There are, you know, when you are doing, when you want to go into business, any form of business, there are three mm. processes involved. There are yeah. three processes involved. Products, you need to have a product, something you want to sell to people, something you are advertising, something you are producing. You need to have a product and you need to have the process. How do you produce that thing? How do you maintain it? And then you need to have the people. The people that will run it, your human relationships and every other thing. Now, let me split them a bit. 
Now, if you're going into farming, the first question I will ask you, your product, what do you want to produce? Why did you want to produce it? How, why are other people, is there nobody producing what you want to produce? What is your competitive advantage of what mm. you want to produce? Yeah. If, you can, if you can't answer those questions, I will just tell you step back. You need to be sure. For instance, like you just asked, some people will tell you for the product. They will say, okay, ah, Gary, I want to be packaging Gary. I will repackage it. I will do that. I will tell you, ah, I want to do this. I want to do this. What, uh, what do you have? What is your own Gary going to have that will make people buy it, that will attract people to buy it, that is different from what every other person has been producing? Yes. If you can't answer that question, you shouldn't produce anything. That's <laughs> one. The second one, process. Okay, everybody's producing. For instance, now, there are some, let's ask you, as I'm using Gary as an example, there are some rural women that produce Gary. You know, when they produce the Gary, they are just, they produce the Gary in their house, they fry and everything, and they send it out. You understand? They are making some little, little money. Then yeah. you come along and say, okay, I want to change the system. That's the process. You want to change the system of which these women are producing this Gary. I want to really see, make a difference. I want to repackage my own. I want to be doing a factory. I want to take that number. I want to do this. But now, I will not tell, okay, that process you want to follow and you want to, who are the people that really understand that process? You understand what I mean? Now, yes. for instance, let me use veggie crop now, since we're discussing crop. If you want to mm -hmm. produce any type of crop, you want to produce tomato, you want to produce cucumber or yam, how do you want to project, produce it? For instance, those mama that I use with Gary, they've been processing and producing all these years, and they are not still getting better off. What I mean yeah. by getting better, yes, what I mean by getting better off is that it's not that they get rich there. It's not that their 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 level of living, their life, their life did not really improve much. You know what I mean by that? They yeah. still, you see, some women they will tell you, you see, some farmers they will tell you they've been farming before you were born. But uh -huh. you wonder how are they, how, why, you understand what I mean? And if they yeah. say farming is lucrative or farming is good, so why are they still at that stage? Now, not to divert. So now you want to produce your tomatoes or whatever. Now, the same tomatoes everybody is taking to the market. Is it still the same process you are going to produce and you are taking to the same market? So what exactly are you changing in that your process? Are you changing? Yeah. You need to be able to answer that. Then the yeah. third question is people. You know, if, if you put your product down, you have a product, you have the process, but who will run the two together? Yes. You, need, you need people. And uh, people, when I talk of people, not just, okay, my brother is there, my auntie is there, and whatever. It doesn't work that way. Actually, it tells people that don't employ somebody you cannot fire. And don't employ somebody based on sentiment. One. <laughs> now, again... Those people, those people you need is, okay, when you need these people, you can't actually, you need somebody that will be dedicated. See, you can meet some people, they will be trustworthy, but they are not dedicated. You know what I mean by that? They are not yes. passionate about what you want to run, but you know you can trust them with money, but they are not dedicated to, they are not passionate about what you have interest in. It means they cannot function well there. On the other hand, you meet some people, they are very dedicated, but they are not trustworthy with your money. Mm. Are you getting what I'm splitting now? Yes. They, you, can't use, you can't use them too. So you discover you need people that have at least those two together. Okay, he or she is passionate about these things. He will do it or she will do it as if it's her own. And then the second one is, ah, he can be trusted with it. Mm. You understand? If you don't have those two within one person then you don't really have a product you don't have a people you don't have a product yeah that's, uh -huh. that's so true. those are you know those are the three processes that people should consider especially when you are coming new it's not about okay i have the money i have the land if you can answer those three questions correctly if you can follow up these three correctly and good then it should be good you know understand with that you know you are good to go you are good to start your farm from there hmm. Yeah, that's 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 true. Um, yeah. So, like you said, um, what I, I 
we have people here in the diaspora that want to get into farming, right? And uh, um, with the little information you've given, that's it's it's totally right. One thing I gathered mostly from that is that don't hire someone you can't fire. Yes. That's very important. <laughs> it's very very important. That means though you know I see that don't mix mix um family with business because you can't fire a family. Most firms that you know people like me and in the diaspora would set up, we'll put our family in there. And um, it has to be someone you can trust and someone that would do it just like you you will, right? Um, so, you know, that's what I get at most. Hey, sorry, there was an, inter- there was an interruption there, the network. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. I, I understand that. It's totally okay. So, um, so now that we're taking care of that, so, like, what crops do you think are the best crops that you would you would farm? You tell me, okay, let's farm this. <laughs> let's get into you know there there are some certain crops that would, would maybe there are higher yields than the other. Don't mind me. I'm I'm talking like a professional that knows what he's talking about, but I'm going to leave that to you. My question is just, yes. um, what crops do you think it's best to <laughs> well, to start with? Yes. Okay, when you are looking at the crop to start with, you start from your markets. How marketables are your crop? Yes, most of us, most people go for vegetables as the first crop. Now, what I tell people is that vegetable is good, but vegetables are very delicate. You know, vegetables are very delicate in the sense that you can, uh, they are short-time crops. When I mean, what I mean by short-time crops is that within three, within three, three months, four months, you start harvesting. It means if you break it down into the, into the year, you can harvest three times in a year. Let's say four times three, that's 12 months. That means you can produce the same type of vegetable. For instance, corn, meat, and sweet corn, uh, cucumbers and everything. You can produce them three times, three subsequent periods. You understand what I mean now? Now, yeah. what happens with them is that in those three times, you might be lucky the three are all successful. You might, not, you might be lucky you have two successful and one season is bad. And at times, you might not be lucky the trees are all bad. Why is that so? Because of the climate, the weather. Like I told you, they are very delicate. They are short-term crops and they are very susceptible to pests, to disease, and to so many things. That's about vegetables. It means if you are trying to go into vegetables, you have to completely dedicate your deals, your house to it. You can't do it part-time if you really want to make something out of okay. it. Okay. Now, when you want, now want to consider cassava, another, you know, the advantage of vegetables, you can grow three times in a year on this, you know, three times in a year, three, yes. you have three seasons for those, their yes. short-term crops. Mm-hmm. Now, when you are considering cassava, you find out that cassava doesn't give you much problem. You know, it didn't give you much problem because once you plant and it has some little rain and uh, it has some little rain, you don't even need to control any pest. If cassava is affected by any pest, by the time it sheds leaves, it will pick up again. You understand what I mean by it? After yep. some time, yep. it will shake body and pick up again and grow mm-hmm. back. So when you now plant those cassavas and or cassava, for the next six months, eight months, nine months, ten months, you only need to just weed. Maybe you weed the farm about three times yes. in the year and you are good to go. But the, ch- the other thing with those other ones is that, you know, you don't have them. You don't have mm-hmm. them somehow until at least the, if you really want your two bars to be big, your cassava should, if you want your two bars to be big, your cassava should stay till 12 months. Because people now, they have, months. okay, there's three months cassava, there's two months cassava. But I tell them, look, your tuba is, you want the tuba small, fine. But at least you have 12 months. 12, 12 months. 12 months, 18 months. Yes, uh, you have 12 months. 18 okay. months for cassava, to harvest your cassava. Wow. And then, in the case of 12 months, let me explain. If you plant cassava in the rainy season, it means you'll be targeting to harvest another seed in another rainy season. Yeah. You understand, you know what I mean now. So yeah. that means yeah, harvest in 12 months. But if you yeah. choose to leave it, you can decide to harvest in maybe the ne- uh, next 12, uh, 16, 18 months. 
depending on the type of tubers you planted. So in this case, when you con con compare cassava and uh, vegetables, if your vegetables are doing fine, if your vegetables mm. are doing fine, you will have make half your returns two, three times before you start having anything on cassava. Mm. <laughs> but if your vegetables are not doing fine, you know, but the advantage, <laughs> like I said, with vegetables is that you can replant. For instance, like this year, by the beginning of the year, most of all the vegetables we did by the beginning of the year were not doing fine. The climate and every other thing affected. But at the end of the year, towards the end of the year, all the ones we were doing, they did really fine. It's, you know, we we're able to replant again. But if it's cassava, okay. you cannot do that. So, so cassava basically crop, you wait till that period you're going to take them. That's it. Till 12 months, till oh. six, uh, 18 months. Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. So that is the difference between it. So now when you say you are choosing the best crop, it now also depends on your market. Let me explain something. I wrote something on my timeline today. I was trying to explain to farmers. I said, for you to be a good farmer, it means you must be able to plant every month. If you are doing mm. vegetables, plant every month. If you are doing cassava, if it's possible for you to plant every month, which is not possible. Yes. <laughs> Why is not uh, for vegetables? You can plant every month. Let's say I want to plant cucumber. I plant one acre in January. I plant one acre in February. One acre in March. Because the way our market system works, every farmer plants the same thing at the same time. Then we harvest at the same time. Of course, what we planted are using the same month. So we harvest at the same time. And by the time we harvest at the same time, then the price dropped in the market. Yep. So, but for, if you are the farmer, for instance, I said something last week, just last two weeks, last week, some farmers were calling me from another farm, another village, like they are looking for where to sell their cucumber. They were selling a bag of cucumber for 1,000 naira because there are many people have planted it. Plenty farmers, plenty people planted wow. and it was surplus. By this week, the same farmer we're discussing, he said the price has risen up. The price has, is going up. Now it is 2000 And I can assure you by the next two, three weeks, it will go back to 5000 6000 Why? Wow. Because at that period, they were selling 1000 The crops were too much in the market mm. because everybody flooded. Then gradually, everybody is expanding the one they have. They are taking it out and it starts reducing. So it brings in, in scarcity. But for a smart farmer or somebody that is really dedicated to farming, if you plant January, it will come out the next month for cucumber. Cucumber is 40 yes. days. If you plant February, it come out the next month. If you plant, it means all year round, you all have your vegetable, yeah. you have you cucumber. Have you and have it cucumber, means yeah. the time they are selling 1,000, you have for the market. The time they are selling 10,000, you have for the market. You don't need to start running around when it is 10,000 to say you want to go and plant. Because as you are planning to go and plant, some other people are also planning to go to do the same thing. So you also, will, all of you will still crash the market again. Oh. That's the way the system has been working for so many vegetables oh. too. Wow. So that, that's good. I, I also am learning a lot from this. Then, and I believe um, some of our viewers are learning a lot as well. And they are going to be, you know, I have um, someone right here, Ulusha Go Fakuridi. Say, go, uh, I believe that's God bless you, ma. I believe that's what he's trying to say, you know. So, you know, you have your fans on here that, you know, they're very glad that you're online with, with us. Um, so my my next, um, you know, question, so to say, will be um, as, as a starter, what's, what's the size of land? So say, for instance, I want to do, Cucumber, for instance. Let's use cucumber since that's what we've been talking about. I want to farm that. What what size of land do I start with? An acre, three acres, four acres, you know? What size of land okay. do you, would you advise um, someone that wants to start to start with? Okay. okay. Now, when we're talking of size of land, I discover something in my little, little research. If I tell you, for instance, I'm a farmer and I tell I have one acre land. But if I, have, if I maximize my land, my one acre land, 
I can harvest more than a farmer that has five acre land. Wow. Okay. And I, I, will, I will break it down again. Oh, okay. Now, for instance, I, I discovered most farmers in Nigeria just based it, when they meet you, the first question they will ask you is, how many acres do you have? How many hectares do you have? Now, when you ask me that question, I will just tell you I have one acre, which is true. I'm not lying. Hmm. For instance, apart from when I was still new on the farm, I've never planted cucumber more than five beds or 10 beds. Okay, let me break it down a little, a bit. You find out that if I have for plants, if you there's something we call plant population. Sorry, I'll be breaking some things a little. Yeah, it's, it's there's, okay. There's something we call plant population. Plant population is the number of plants on your farm. For instance, you want to plant cucumber on your one acre farmland. Your one acre is 4,000 square meter. On that farmland, I, on my own farmland, one acre, I can choose, I can arrange that I will have 25,600 plants of cucumber on my farm. But for an average farmer, they are going to be having 5,000, 6,000 plants on their one acre farm. And now, in the, by calculation, each plant on my farm will give me like 500 grams, 250 grams. Imagine me having 25,000 plants to give me wow. 500 grams on good, men, good agricultural practice. Now, the other farmer with one acre has 5,000 plants arrangement. And they're also giving him, let's even say they're giving him one, one kg. Do you know he's still not getting as much heat as I'm getting? Hmm. You understand? That's so true. That, that plant population is what Nigerian farmers don't know yet. So you find out somebody is planting 10 acres farm, but the plants on his 10 acres farm, they are just what one acre farm plants. One acre. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So he's going to, he's just going to work on 10 acres. He's going to have workers of 10 acres. He's going to have a sprayer of 10 acres. Anything he's going to use is going to be cal calculated 10 acres. Whereas his own is just growing one acre plants. <laughs> And the harvest is going to get is going to be that one acre plant of harvest. I hope I'm not confusing wow. everybody here. Oh wow, <laughs> it's really something. <laughs> because the, the, why why I'm laughing is that I'm uh, also in that kind of shoe. Okay. Um, I'm always thinking that the more land you have, the better <laughs> farmer you're going to be. You understand? So when I'm actually no. looking for farmland, I'm always like, oh, uh, they tell me, oh, there's one for an acre. I'll be like, no, 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 it's too small. I want 10 oh. acres. You understand? Because, <laughs> and a lot of us do not know the, you know, the practice that entails into farming for a 10 acres of land. But you feel like uh, the more land I, I, I've got, the better for me, right? So yes. as you're saying it right now, it's like you're just talking directly to me. And I'm realizing that, okay, maybe I should have just bought the one acre instead. And, you know, yes. I'll make more, you know, it's going to be better it's, for me. But that, it's, a, exactly. it's good. That, that's exactly. really something. Um, I, exactly. There's something you're saying on here. I believe it's also about what we're talking about now, which is uh -huh. about the land and everything. But I'm just going to read it out to you. And I want you to talk about it. Um, what he says okay. is that... Uh, What's the yield for a particular size of land? And what practices will give you um, a great harvest? So hmm. like um, for an acre of land, what yield would you say it's going to come from an acre? Of, let's say for, we're, we're using cucumber right now for, okay. uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, okay. show. So, so I have an acre of land. What yield do you think? Um, I will get from an acre of land. And what are the practices that I need to take to make sure this, you know, I get a stag yield at the end of the day? Okay. I hope, I hope, I, uh, in, I hope you're not going to be penalizing me for leaving some of the question to expand on where this, the question starts from. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. Now for this one, it said, what yield per acre? The yield, it means the result you are expecting from your acre. The number, yeah. you know, we calculate cucumber in bags. The yes. number of bags you are expecting to get from your acre. Now, mm -hmm. the answer I will give is that the yield you are expecting from that, your one acre plant, 
depend on so many factors. You know, yeah. factors of producing that one acre. Now, mm. one, the number of plants, the number of cucumber plant stand that you have under your one acre. I just make example of my own farm and somebody else that have 5,000 and me having 25,000. It increases your yield. The second one is your soil. You see, soil is a topic that nobody really bothers about in Nigeria. We just believe you go, you plow the land, and then, pooh, you start planting. Your soil, the soil gives you what you give the soil. Now, what do you give the soil? If you have a soil that does not have nutrients, there's something we call nutrients, and these nutrients are in form of nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus. That's the major one. We have the minor one that are... Calcium, magnesium, boludinum, uh, and all these things. These are, if your soil does not have them in the right proportion, if they don't have it, you are not getting anything from that crop mm. on the yield. The second one, your pest control. I remember some of my trainees this season. We have so much pests that I told them, look, we are not getting anything from this cucumber again. Because if you don't control the pest, if you don't reduce the quantity of the pest on your farm, they will finish everything. So the pest control, how you manage it, how you manage the pest on your farm. Number three, factors of your yield. What will determine your yield? Number three, pollination on your farm. For instance, most Nigerian farmers, most people, they use chemical, they use uh, synthetic chemicals and everything, and they kill the beneficial insects. There's something we call beneficial insects, the pests, uh, the, mm, the bees and everything. So people kill them off. When they kill the bees off, the beneficial insects, you find out that it's reduced your yield. For instance, it is the bees that pick the pollen grains from the male flowers and take it to the female flowers. Most people don't know that plants as females are male. The plants, yes, your tomatoes, your cucumber, they have wow. female cucumber, they have uh -oh. male cucumber. But people don't, I showed some of, I showed my students whenever they come, this is a female one, this is a male one. This is the one that Seriously. will give you the fruits. This is the uh, one that I, will not give I, you the fruits. I never knew that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, now in the process, you planted your cucumber and there's a female flower, there's a male flower. Then your, there's the bees. The bees will always come in the morning. So they will put their bees are not there to eat your cucumber. They are there to look for nectars inside the flowers. So they'll pick the nectars and from the male flower uh, from the pollens from the male and take it to the anthers of the female, you know. And that is where pollination, that's where you have your fruits. So your yield depends on the number of pollination that can that happens on your farm. Where people don't get the number of pollination is that when they come in the morning, they just carry this, they are our uh party idea, all these chemicals we use and all these things, and they just blow the cucumber because they are sending away pests. In the process of blowing the cucumber, they kill the bees. Wow. And then you reduce your heat. That's mm. pollination. Then we talk of water. Let me, let me break. Uh, we talk of water. You plant. Okay, a lot of, Niger a lot of farmers are rain-fed de dependent you, uh, because you, you, you plant your crop. By the time you plant your crop, you find out that, okay, rain fell today. None of us can predict whether rain will fall tomorrow or next tomorrow or the, ne the next day. You just plant and you are waiting for the rain. If you put your seed in the soil and the rain did not fall for the next one week or two weeks, that seed, for the next five days, if you put a seed in the soil and the rain did not fall for the next five days, your seed is gone. Uh. It's dead. So it means with your irrigation, if you have external water to add, when you put the seed down, you give it water that day. Three days after, the same applied to all crops, corn, everything. This, this, uh, the third day or fourth day, you support it with water again. You are, mm. you are helping it to, to develop. Not waiting for rain. And if rain did not come, you start praying and start shouting. So having a good Those source are, of water is very important. Exactly. So that, now I've mentioned about four or five. There is still yep. a lot of factors. Mm. That will make you have your yield. But now, when people say good agricultural practices, good agricultural practices means good agricultural practices means okay, you follow all the all the expectations. You follow the you use the water as is. Okay, let me give you an, an an experience now. The water you are giving it's not that you just pour water anyhow and leave, or you just give water. On um, like on my farm, I tell my students on one we have beds. There's something we call raised beds. We prepare the beds and everything. One, and in an acre, we develop 80 raised beds in one acre. 
One of the raised beds need 1,000 liters of water every three days if you are planting cucumber. Wow. Uh -huh. Now imagine the, the bed that have that required 1,000 liters of water. I didn't give you the water for the next two, three weeks while I was waiting for rain. What are you, that are you expecting? <laughs> what fruit are you expecting? So, but on good basis, when you do the right thing, you have the technical know-how and everything, you should expect 500 to 600 or 400 bags of cucumber from one acre. But see, on an advice, I don't even advise you to go for one acre because it'd be difficult for you to manage if you follow the good agricultural practices. Instead, do cutter, cutter acre. Because if you go for one acre and at the end of the day, you didn't give them the maximum maintenance, you are still running at a loss. Running at a loss. So instead of going for one acre, why don't you just do, I'll do quarter acre first. I remember there was some set of trainees on my farm. I put them through breaking cucumber. Now right here, I told you 80 raised beds make one acre on our own farm. By doing just five raised beds, we're able to harvest 35 bags of cucumber. Wow. Just five. From five, five birds. So, like, uh, what are the so, sizes of each of the birds? Uh, the the, the, the bird are... length is 25, meter, 25 meter length, two meter wide. Okay. Okay. So, maybe hopefully... if you have one acre. Yeah, go on. Don't let me cut you. Okay. If you have one acre land, you design, you will have 80 of those birds. You, if you follow the, 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 the design, you have 80 on your one acre bed, ma'am. Okay. All right. So basically, um, the designs and everything are something you could consult for, right? Yes. Okay. Um, that's that's very good. Um, I believe this topic is not done yet because it it seems that there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, so hopefully, maybe next time, whenever we talk again, we're still going. It's going to be one of the topics we're going to actually bring out that we're going to talk about. Because I know there's going to be a lot of practices that we need to do that we all don't know about. Um, like I said, there's some information I personally that affects me personally, like for the land size and things like that. It's I felt so. Let me use the word foolish when you said it. I was like, oh my god, really? So I could just get a small <laughs> land and get a good yield and look for the bigger yeah, land. That so I, I'm always looking for the bigger land, actually. But yeah. I, know I need something bigger. They tell me this. I'll be like, no, no, no. That's just mine. I need something bigger than that. So, oh, my God. So I'm realizing now that, okay, just a, that's a, a very, very silly move. Um, yeah. I also have someone from um, here on Facebook, Rashida Zabril. Um, the question is... Um, she wants to know um, how do you leverage the required pl plant population and how do you go about putting it right in the right population on the farm? I know you've also shared about that, like, you know, on your, on your farm. So, but I want you to emphasize on what she's talking about because these are all questions that I have as well that I wanted to ask you about. So, I'm glad that we have viewers that have the same thought of mind like me. So, can you just um, emphasize a bit about that? Okay. Now, when you are uh, the plant population, for instance, when you are planting, when you want to plant your, your, when you want to plant, when you want to plant any crop, you when you if you are using your system of farming. Like the normal tractor plow, when people people believe once you tractor, you use tractor to plow, you've completed everything. So when you use tractor to plow, you will not be able to achieve that number of plants if you don't do raised bed. What I mean by raised bed is that there's a way you do your ridges that it accommodates more. It has better yeah. advantage than people that are doing just ordinary bed. So yeah, if yeah. you do your raised bed on one raised bed, on one raised bed, we have about 300, 320 to 350 plants by the time you plant them. For instance, on corn, let's go to maize. On maize, it is recommended, go to books and everything. They will tell you, your, uh, you need to put like 34,000 plants of maize on one acre. Many people keep asking me, how do you arrange it? I will say, come and see it on my farm. See the way this, and even the one I arranged, I, I'm still not, I couldn't get the 34,000. I was able to get 25,600. 
Wow. On one acre. So it is the way you arrange your farm. Like, you know, like I used to tell people, you don't just go to farm because you have the money and you have the land. You need, you know, agriculture. It is a culture that must be learned. But people are not learning the culture. They just want to make, you know, they want to use the culture to make money, but they are not learning the culture. It is called agriculture. It's a cultural thing. So you need to learn the culture. So the culture, the arrangement of plants, the arrangement of every other thing, once you get that right, then you are good to go. There's a way we arrange it. Then you plant your corn. But, you know, most people, like I keep, I just see emphasize here, they don't know how to arrange the plant population. And they don't get the right age because of that. So um, this, this, so basically, this is more like saying is believing. So it means yes. we can talk about it right now. We can say, okay, you can arrange it this way, you can. But if you're actually yeah. not there and you see it, you, you can not understand it. You won't understand. Won't. So um, Rashida Zebro, I believe maybe at the end of the day, if it's okay with um, Yinka, we're going to provide our contact on here. You can get in touch with her. Try and go check out her farm. See how it's done. Um, she's also ha she also has a question about um, you eighty. You say eighty birds on an yes. acre, I believe, not an hectare. Yes, it's an acre, not hectare, on an right? Acre, acre, and yeah. Also, also, it's on an acre of land. And um, yes. you also mentioned the size again, which she wants you to also mention again. So mention um, again. Okay. Yeah. The uh the an acre land when people t when you when you are saying you have an acre a lot of I realize a lot of people don't know the difference between there are two measurements there are two measurements for land on the farm there's acre there's hectare for acre acre is any length and breadth that you multiply together to give you four thousand square meter you know when you had length is a meter. Uh, bread is a meter. By the time you join the meter, meter, you are having double meter. You, yeah. I don't know if you understand what I'm calculating. Here. So yeah. you have length, any measurement, your length, your bread, any dimension, you multiply them and you get 4,000 square meter. That is one acre of land. And uh, anyone in hectare, anyone you measured, any land size that gives you 10,000 square meter is one hectare of land. Now, the difference between the two, you can get from one hectare, if you have one hectare, you can have two, one hectare, you can get two and you have acres from your one hectare. You know, 4,000 plus 4,000, 8,000 plus 2,000, 10,000. Yes. That's the calculation. So now, if oh. you have one acre, let me just put in, if you are reading online or you are using international standard, they use hectares. Like most yes, times when we are writing we, reports, yeah. When, we are, when I write in reports, they use hectares. Mm. It does the international standard. But when you are using, uh, when you are using, uh, when you, like the rural farmers in my area, every other area, they use acres. Some even have some other things they use outside acres again. But for, you know, so acres is common in the rural side. Hectare yeah. is common sure. with uh, international standard, book people, and, uh, and all these government agencies. Uh, like all this river business and everything, they use hectare. That's the standard. That's but true. for farmers, rural farmers, we use acre, and it's 4,000. Now, when I say 4,000 square meter, your length might be 100 meter, and your breadth can be four, uh, 40 meter. If you multiply it, it gives you 4,000 meter. You might also have your length to be 50 meter, and your breadth to be 80. 80 by 50 is 4,000 meter. It could be, you know, it could change in any dimension. As long as it's yeah. 4,000 meter, meter square, it gives you an acre. Okay. Okay. So it is so, that same acre that we, we designed, we cut it, we, we designed the system to be able to give us 80 raised beds. You see, it's good when you divide your farm. I will tell you why. When you get to the farm one day, you want to maintain, you'll be able to maintain, you'll be able to follow their maintenance. For instance, if I get to farm now, we want to give water. Let me discuss our, if you want to give water, irrigation water, I always tell my guys, I will say, okay, we are, we are wetting these 20 today. That means we are wetting 20 beds. That means that, day, that time they will open just 20 beds of irrigation and they will wet it, they will give it water to it maximally. Then they lock it up again. And maybe tomorrow I say, okay, another 20. That way we're able to monitor, okay, 
When did this one get water? How many has it gotten two twice a week? How many you understand? And if rain falls, well, thank God we are not going to open the water. <laughs> but we don't have to wait for rain. Because the more if you wait, you are let me tell you how plants work when there's no rain. The moment your plant is coming up and is is getting big. By the time you stop to water or the rain stops or you don't give it water, it will be using the, the, the nutrients it has stored, the food it has stored, to be using it to survive for that period. By the time you come back to start adding the water, eh, it will not be able to go back to that, uh, bond, uh, to that big size. Where, you understand what I... So it has yep, reduced the heat. Saying. It has reduced your heat. So you don't have to stop that. So those are little, little things that most farmers are not taking into consideration around there. Okay, that's that's good. So um, what, what, what was the size of the each of the birds again? The bed? Okay, the measurement we use for bed is the length is 25 meter and the bread is 2 meter. So you carve out 80 of it for an acre. All right, so um, Rashida, I hope you heard that. Um, like I said, um, we're going to leave our information on here as well. So go check out the farm because like I said, there are some things on here that we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about it, but if you see it, you actually understand it better. So that's, um, that's the thing. So um, should we just go on with the questions um, some of our viewers ask or do you have, or you, you still have some information you want to share as well? Oh, how we do you can, want us to go uh, I think we should work. If we have questions, we should just, we should work with the questions to that. Oh, okay. All right. Um, so um, the other thing I want to talk about is that, um, as you know, okay, I, I've started the farm and um, it's going on. How do I market myself? How, what's the business part of it? It's, it's vegetable. Don't you just have it everywhere? Why would someone like me want to go into vegetable farming and I think I'm going to make money from I'll it? do someone. I say, why Why would but, someone like me want to go into vegetable farming and I think I'm going to make money from it? Um, because, you know, some people will be like, oh, vegetable farming, you have it everywhere. They sell it in the market everywhere. So yes. we, let's talk about the business part of it. So as a vegetable okay. farmer, what, you know, yeah. what's he going to entail me to make money to you know actually be make it a, do it as a business okay now uh you know okay i'm supposed to do that you know in a uh, currently our uh, in nigeria do you know uh we import uh the food food processing companies in nigeria one they import several tons of dry chili pepper into the country you know pepper is a vegetable yes yeah. And it's used in making spices and all these our indomie, no juice companies and all these stuff, yeah. they use it. So they import their chilies from India. There's something called onion flakes. The yeah. onions, you dried it and ground it, is imported into Nigeria. There are a lot of vegetables like that that get imported into Nigeria. Why are they doing that? You find out that a normal regular farmer, eh? A regular farmer, we only produce during the rainy season. And when a regular farmer produces during the rainy season, it means he can only supply the produce only in rainy season. Now, what happens to those companies when we are in the dry season or those period that the farmers is not producing? What do they do? They import. By the time you don't go to meet them and say, look, I want to, okay, now I want to be, I want, I want to be supplying you. They want to be assured, not just assured. They want to see your farm. They want to know that actually you will really, really meet up to supply for the next one year or more than that. For instance, I, re I remember having some meeting with spas about two, three years ago. They gave me some things they need. And you know, one of the conditions they give, they want farmers that are in group network, as in that have several, so that, they know if this one did not perform well, the other one will perform well, and they can have consistent supply of that or what they need. But because they are not getting that, so they resort to importing even fresh vegetables, tomatoes, uh, every other vegetables you can think of are daily are imported. Not daily, they are imported into Nigeria because our farmers could not meet up. 
Now, why are they not meeting up the business part? We now that takes us to irrigation system. We don't have irrigation system. What most people do, they plant in the rainy season when there's no rain, they stop. Now you ask me, you will be forced to ask me the question, but the nuts are producing the vegetables in bulk. So why are they not buying from there? The quality of what they are producing in the north is not good. They use fertilizer, synthetic, and all these stuff. And so it does not meet the grade that those ones that are using it require. And the mm. north also don't mm. produce all year round. The northerners only produce per season. For instance, from, from some moment now, December or from January, tomato will flood the markets because the northerners have produced it. So January, February, March, the market is flooded with tomatoes. Flooded. They will nearly be begging you to come and pick it. April, May, June, July, nothing again. So it's like that. So like I started with, I said, if you want to go into vegetable and you want to do it as a business, one, you need first, those companies that will collect it from you, will not sign agreement with you if they are not sure you can produce consistently. Now, how do you produce consistently? It means you must have been producing something and be going to the general market and work on your system. You know what I mean by working on the system? For instance, yes. I remember for the past three years, I've been struggling to get farmers to say, let's form a network so that we can be producing and supplying either ShopRite or spas or this thing. But I couldn't meet up because nobody's interested in doing that. Hmm. Until maybe recently now that, okay, there are some farmers, some foreigners that are ready to do the work. So we produce now every month. It is when we standardize that, we have a quantity we produce, okay, we are producing tomato every month whether it sells in the market, the local market, or it doesn't sell. Okay, we are producing corn every month, rainy season, dry season, we produce. By the time we standardize that, you know, we can now, we know we can meet that capacity to supply the company. Yeah. And then we can sign the agreement and say, no, no. But the challenge we have is, ah, I want to go Pepe. How much will I get back in the next one month? Or how much will I get back in the next two? You know, no, the system. You, that's the challenges we have. And that's why we don't have a stabilized system. Look at during COVID era, Kenya was still supplying hero, peppers and vegetables and every other thing because they were growing all year round. We don't have yeah. it around there. So that, that's really something. So um, Raji, I believe this also answers your question as well. So, um, she, she's been able to cover that about um, the business part of it and um, he was also talking about this, this standardization of um, selling of vegetable which I believe you've answered as well um, another thing is that um, Asan Dankure wants to know does cucumber have a peak sale period like tomato, um, tomatoes and um, onions okay oh uh Cucumber, cucumber used to have peak period, but not anymore. Not anymore in the sense that cucumber is just 40 days. We have cucumber that start maturing in 36 days. You start harvesting in 36 days, 40 days, and everything. So cucumber market, and you know, every one of us who want the, short, the shortest route to make this uh, money. <laughs> you understand? Fun. So everybody, every graduate, every wherever, anyone that is coming to farm, start with cucumber. You understand? So it means automatically all the time the market is always flooded with cucumber. Mm. So that, that's why cucumber doesn't have any peak period. In the last two years, the highest price I've seen for cucumber is 5000 6000 By the time I started growing cucumber in the, by three years ago, four years ago, it will sell at times for 10000 for 12000 Wow. <laughs> but now the highest will be 5000 4000 so cucumber doesn't really have peak period again because people are planting in there. But I'm believing, see, for a smart farmer that grows every month, there will be some month we made the best price because very soon I know cucumber will still be scarce okay. because they are, we, are just, uh, we are just getting out of the flood now, the oh. glut period. That's good. So um, thank you very much for that information. Um, so I believe, you, because I remember when you were talking before, you were talking about um, not using chemicals or pesticides and things like that. So definitely, okay. 
you are okay. you are an organic farmer. So, uh, yes, yes, yes. Some, somehow. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we are already see, actually, food, right? I do organic. I uh, see. You know, there's something. Let me explain. When uh, in Nigeria, I don't preach organic. I would tell. I do organic. Yes, I don't use chemicals. I try. I avoid them as much as possible. But I don't preach the people not to use it. You know why? Because nobody is really paying for organic. Mm, you know what yeah, I mean? Much. If you are doing organic, it means you are doing so, you are taking a lot of special cares of your crop. For instance, we have said some tomatoes about a week ago. I put them at home. I want to see when they will get spoiled. And they are not getting mm. spoiled because they are organic. If it is mm. the, uh, the synthetics and everything, they will have been bringing out water by the third day or the second day at times. You understand? But what am I saying? In the essence, nobody in Nigeria, they just want to buy things. As in, yeah. nobody asks you, nobody look, really look out for that special organic or whatever. But why did mm. I choose to produce that? Because I've attended, I attended one training one time and it was scary the way they taught us about not going near chemicals. So I just imbibed the spirit that, okay, let me, let me stay with this. All right, so thank I, you very uh, much. Okay. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so... It's 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 been a wonderful, you know, listening to you. Like the, your our very first um, viewer, Flush Bainin, that said she's the best. Like she, whoever he or she, she's right. Yes, uh, she a, <laughs> we've been friends. We've been friends for quite some time. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh, she's she, so you know that that statement is just right. Um, it's a wealth of information from you, and. Um, I been um, me not being in Nigeria, it gives me hope of you know knowing that okay there are people out there that actually do it the right way and would would um, let you you know give you information that you need to get things done. So um, how do we, for instance, um, you want someone from in the from someone in the diaspora wants to talk to talk to you. They want you to help them set up a farm. They, you know, they just, they want you to consult. Do you do things like that? Yes, I do consult. Okay. I do consult for farm setups and everything. Yes. Oh, okay. So um, I believe um, it's possible we can have that information so that we can have it posted on here so that um, everybody can see it just in case, um, you know, that would be, that would be nice. Uh, it's okay to post your contact, right? Yes, please. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do that. I'm going to post it on here. Um, the the same phone number I have. It's the same number that you know they need, right? Uh, so, um, what other thing do we need to talk about? When uh, the the money part of it, you must be a millionaire farming. <laughs> far 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 from that. <laughs> far 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 must, from it. Must me. be like a multi millionaire farmer kind of thing, and you know, <laughs> because you know, if some people sell it that way, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing that up is that. You know, sometimes it's mm. been sold that, oh, get into this and you can make millions of dollars or millions of naira, you know, and everything. And you find out that, you know, it also takes millions of naira to invest in it and time. You need time, exactly. you need money, you know, exactly. you need patience, especially. Because sometimes exactly. it just don't work the right way. You need information. You, need, you know, there's a lot of things that entails for you to get into it. So for for someone like you that have been into it, it's it's, it's mm-hmm. really encouraging, you know. You, I, you, like they say, what a, a man can do, a woman can do better. So you're mm-hmm. definitely doing better than I'll us. Be, we are we are pushing. <laughs> <laughs> so you're definitely we are pushing anyway. Now. We are pushing. So um, so on your farm right now, let's talk about your farm. You okay. you say you farm on an, an acre of land, right? What are yes. the crops that you have? 
what are the vegetables okay. that you farm on your farm? Okay, correct. Uh, you know, for for training purposes, for people that you know, like we normally have trainings every to every other month. For instance, some new set will be resuming with us by January 10th. As in, they will come to the farm, they'll stay for three months. Minimum, we advise three months. So that by the time they stay for three months, they'll be able to witness this complete cycle of one vegetable or the other from the beginning to the end. Currently on the yeah. farm, we have tomatoes. We have tomatoes that are going to the market. We have chili peppers. We have even habanero peppers. And then wow. for training, for those ones are on commercial basis. But for like, we have carrots, but carrots is just for experimental purpose. For the you see, most people, when they come to the farm, they don't even realize that they grow, carrots can grow in the Southwest. Like for instance, now it was of recent, I realized many people don't even know that onions can grow in the South, Southern part. <laughs> onions and all the hair. So, and meanwhile, I, me, I only practice and just do small, small ones on, for training purposes. Even yeah. as I speak now, I have, we have onions on the farm. Wow. We have onions mm -hmm. on the farm. We have carrots on the farm, you know, but those, then we have the one we grow for commercial. This is the ones that go to the market. But the one for mm -hmm. trainings are quite different because so that when people come for training, you won't just come. When you come to the training, we tell you you have to spend three months. It's minimum, but some people stay all through. Even they stay more than that three months. Why some run away one week, depending on whatever. Yeah. So in the process, we put them through. You, you learn how to plant tomatoes, the nursery, they, are, they are learn how to do the carrots, the pepper, the challenges. You see everything that you can really come across on the farm. And the benefit is that by the time you finish with us and you go, when you have challenges on your farm or anything, it's easy for you to communicate with us and say, look, mm. that thing that happened when I was on your farm or that one. You understand what I mean? So we'll be able yeah, to discuss and relate saying. together. And you can... Eh? Yeah, I get what you're saying. saying. Uh -huh. so I get you. It's easy. So I, t I always tell people, come, see, when you are here, you understand it better than when we talk online or you are calling me on phone. And a lot of people really want online training. It's not practical. But I tell them, farming is practical. There's not much I tell them online or whatever that can still compensate for that. So on mm. the farm, we always grow different. Like, for instance, in the next one week or two weeks, we start growing corn. This is dry season. Nobody will be growing corn, but we will be growing sweet corn. And so, you know, like I said, you grow all year round so that the season that is good, we always come to you. Okay, wow. So <laughs> that's something. You grow corn when it's not its season. Yes, we, that's, that's, yes. that's something. It's encouraging. Um, so I have your contact <laughs> scrolling on the screen, on the bottom of our screen right now. So uh, basically, anybody that wants to get in touch with you should be able to give you a call or send you a WhatsApp on there. Um, that will be the easiest way to get in touch with you so that they can, you know, get information on how to get to your farm and how to, you know, yes. get to talk to you and things like that. Um, let me see if we have any other question on here. Okay, we have someone here. That's um, Boye Giagbola. Uh, see what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Wanted, the co wanted your contact information as well. So <laughs> we have it on here as well. So like I said, um, we, we still have a lot to talk about. But um, I believe, you know, right, the question, you know, we've covered a lot of stuff for, for now. We've been talking, um, chatting about an hour now. And yeah. we also have someone, Pampa Crown. So, okay, just sharing an idea, letting us know that uh, the South is the most uh, versatile farmland where almost everything grows, onion, carrot, veg vegetables, and, um, you know, just letting us, you know, know about us by your yeah. idea as well. And also, the only, another thing I realized is that we, we, I don't know, maybe it's just the mentality we've had back home that we think that, okay, this part of Nigeria only grows this or can only grow that. Nigeria is just way too, you know, good for anything. The whole of Nigeria, our resources is just 
it's just too much. That's probably one of the reasons why we are we are so spoiled. Uh, we do anyhow because we 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 have too much. We can yes. grow things anywhere. Abekuta, Ogun State, you know, you anywhere you want to. You can. We just have the we have the land for everything. You understand? We can exactly, you know, exactly. And that's why you know I'm glad that we you know the youths are actually being encouraged to go to the farm because if we can feed ourselves, we we'll solve yes. our of our problem, right? So yes, but why going to the farm? They need to be. They need to be to, to be. Uh, they need to. They need to provide them with the technical know-how know so that how, they don't yeah, just go to the farm important. and start. Yes. Wasting time. Yes. yes. They need to well, that's that's why you someone like you come in and why you know someone like me wants to provide a platform for us to to keep armoring at it that you know you need to do it the right way. It's it's all done that way. Yes. Because doing things the right way from yes. the start makes a lot of sense. It helps you exactly you know, yes. grow better and all that. It saves a lot of heart aches and everything. Exactly. So that's why it's best to just do it on time, no matter what. So I'm going to thank you very much, um, Inka. It's been wonderful talking to you. And like I said, I, I, I'm going to put you on the spot. You're going to have to promise us you're going to come back and share more <laughs> ideas. <laughs> I know you're a busy person you have, you know, and all that, but you know, and I'm hoping one of these days we'll be able to also show your farm on, on here to, There's you no know, problem. other people to be able to see. And to, you know, no if, you, if, if you have any final thoughts or any final advice for today's show, just, um, you can share with us. We'll, Okay. Like uh, well, thank you. Thank you for bringing me here because it's difficult getting me out of the farm. But okay, the advice I have is that, you know, for those that are viewing this and everything, they should, before going to the farm, they need to know exactly what they really want to do. And mm -hmm. like I said, when we started, whatever thing you want to go into, be sure you have a point. You have you have a unique point that differentiates your product from every other product. If you don't have that, then there's no point trying to go there because see, farming agriculture is the lowest point. It has the lowest point of entry for professionals. You know what I mean? Once you have yeah. land, you have money. Even if you don't have money, just go and look for one small land and start, go with your cutlass and hope you are a farmer. So eh, oh. virtually everybody is a farmer. But how many of everyone, everybody is producing productively? So for if you are here and you want to go into farm, you can pick on my books too. I have books. Before the, my book, How to Farm Profitably in Nigeria, is a, is a blockbuster. I think people have been commenting about it. You can just get it out, skim through it, and your orientation about agriculture will completely change. Thank wow. you, sir. Wow. So you, you, have, you have a book or a book. Hmm. Okay. Yes, I have. Do books. you have a Do you have a link for that? Do you have a link? Oh, that yes, I have a share? I have a website. Yes, I have a okay. website. Yeah. So Adish, best. Adeshola, Adeshola, Adeshola Inca dot com. Wow, your name. Okay. I have a. Uh, I have a website. Go. I'm going to put it on here so that um we can share that as well. So. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. Just give me a minute. Yeah, we're going to put it on here. So it's Adeshola, right? Yes, no H. S O okay. Adeshola. com. So, guys, like you said, she's got um, a, a website. I have it on, also on there. Uh, no, let me redo that to make sure so that it's able to. Let me put your World Wide Web there. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. I have it on there. She's got a website, guys. Go on there. Check out our book. And um, hopefully we'll be able to get her back on here with our whole, you know, she's she's a busy person, you know. You, we, we are so happy that she's able to give us that time today to share ideas with us. 
Well, we are hoping that we'll be able to get her on board, you know, sometime soon again. I'm going to keep bugging her. I'll let you guys know. I'll keep bugging her so that she, she comes back on here and uh, we can, you know, give you more ideas on, you know, how to grow, you know, f- f- you know, vegetable profitably, make money actually uh, out of it and not think like someone like me that think that you need to have a big land to farm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, so, small, 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 <laughs> small is profitable if you if yeah, manage yeah. well. Small yeah, is so very profitable. That's 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 really something. I'm I'm glad, you know. So, um, yeah, that that's that's it. It's, we just have some few comments from fans that uh, love the show. Please, uh, more time. And they do you have? <laughs> oh like, my god! Okay, you already have people <laughs> telling you that you have to come back. <laughs> So you see, it's not, it's not just me. You, you go definitely have to come back. Well, we're going to, we're going to share whenever I'm able to get her back on the show and uh, to talk about, um, you know, we want to make her permanent on the show. It's our show. They just say it's going to be our show. Anything vegetable farming, it's going to be our. So thank you guys for also helping me tell, let her know that she has to come back online. So, um, <laughs> That's that's just about it. Um, yeah, that's okay. The same person wanted to know how do you what do you advise about this Fulani with their oh. hair cartoons <laughs> and everything? I know that's a major problem back home, right? Uh, how how do you deal with something like that? The actually it's still a it's still one of the challenges we have on the farm, the one of the challenges, you know. Okay, briefly, let me tell you this. On my farm, I have my farm and uh, my guys were sleeping on the farm. My farm, the guys that are working with me, they, we have a house on the farm and so they were sleeping on the farm. But of recent, maybe about a month ago, uh, you know, I don't grow cassava. Full and, uh, the air smell disturbs, uh, they disturbs, it disturbs ra- uh, ra- uh, cassava farmers and corn farmers a lot, most especially cassava. You know, they go to their farm, uproot the cassava, and feed it to the to the cactus when the farmer is not around. You know, farm, farmers don't stay on the farm here. Yeah. So they go to their farms, and you know, I have them all around me. We're in the same area. But on my home farm, since I grow vegetables, yes, when they come to my home farm, because my boys are staying around and they're sleeping there, most times they don't even come near our area a bit then. But the moment now, the, as of the last time, they have some challenges with the farmer and they marketed some farmers. As in, some farmers met them and questioned them and they fought, they fought. Since then, I moved my boys to the house. I told them I can't allow them to sleep on the farm again. They go from the house in the morning. And as I'm speaking with you right now, I'm still contemplating how I can secure the farm to get them back to the farm. That's another, that's maybe that's one major challenge I would tell anyone that is going into the farm. You need to find a way to secure your farm. I'm sorry to use that word. Why? Because, you see, if you are not one, you can't stay on the farm without security. As in, when I mean security, is that when you are there in the daytime, they will not come and destroy your farm. It is when you leave at night, they destroy the farm. You know, they come, most times they pass at night. And then, you know, anything like for us that use drip tapes and everything, once the cattle stepped on it, those drip tapes are gone. They are bad. They might they squeeze up and start leaking. You can use it. They've done it for me once, so it was like a good deal for me for the boys to say they will stay on the farm. But now I move them. Now it means even if they move back, we still have that challenge. We don't know when S men will come again. It's a big, big issue. Like what I'm planning to do now is to look for money and do some fencing of the residential area. You can fence the whole farm. I don't know. That's not possible. So that I don't. I'm not financially. A buoyant to that level. So I'm thinking I should just fence the residential area. The advice I'll give for those that are coming, don't go and get farm in a remote area. Make sure you stay around where farmers are, preferably farmers that stay on the farm. Most farmers don't stay on the farm. Like in my area, I think I'm the only one that have a, that have a small place on the farm where people can sleep. Every other farmer goes home every day. And it's been a big challenge because for me, I love to have somebody I would love to stay on the farm. We have a borehole. We can pump water at night. We can walk. You know, you know it makes it interesting, but that's a big challenge. We are still looking at solving around there. Oh, wow. Okay. 
So it's it's a problem right in Nigeria for everybody, actually. It's a big one. Uh, yeah, so... A big one. You're just going to have to manage it as much as you can. We're Nigerians, exactly. right? Exactly. We always know how to manage uh, stuff, no matter what the situation exactly, is. Exactly, exactly. Um, so... I, I think we, it's, you know, we can go on and on because I there's just more questions coming on. So... <laughs> If we keep taking them, we're going to be here for the next. Oh, there you go. Another one just came on again. Uh, what I'll do is that I'm going to save those questions for another day. You understand? Okay. So, and because I know you're busy, I won't want to take you away from um, your thing you're doing, um, you know, whatever you you have to do. Um, so I'm going to save those questions for you. Um, thank you so much, Inka, for being on the on the show with us. We're going to be doing this again. You know, we're going to be talking about other aspect of farming, but like I said, I'm hoping that the vegetable, you know, part of it, planting it will be your show. So we're going to talk about that after the show much later. And um, because you, you have the knowledge, where there's just no points going about. Uh, and you're actually doing it as well. So thank you so much again, once again. I keep saying thank you. Thank you. That's how <laughs> excited I am, you know, talking to, to you. Uh, so, you know, we're glad you're on the show. Uh, we're going to be giving it a, a rest here today. And thank you guys for joining us on the show today. Um, if your questions was, wasn't answered today, be sure that we're going to take it up whenever we have Inka on board again. All right. And um, my name is Ayodeji Thomas once again. And I'm going to say... Thank you so much and have a nice day. All right. Thank bye -bye. you so much. Thank you.